Hi, this deck of cards was compiled to facilitate working through the MCAT style passage. What conditions influence lyophilization? And it deals mostly with phase change as well as some thermal conductivity. All right. Lyophilization or F blank E dash T blank G is a technique of dehydration which utilizes low pressure and low temperature. So some of you, um, something might resonate when low pressure is mentioned, but low temperature should be a major clue, as well as some of the words that are going to follow. Low temperature environments to induce the sublimation, you guys should know what this is, of water from a material. So what's the answer? And remember that sublimation is when a substance has a phase change directly from its solid state to its gaseous state. It skips the liquid phase as most people would conceptualize that it must go through in order to go from a solid state to a vapor state. The answer is freeze drying. Okay, um, some of you might know be familiar with that freeze-dried ice cream or the packets of um, like food that you can reconstitute. I think they're used in the military. Okay. I already told you this just now, that um, sublimation is the process of converting a substance from a solid directly to a blank. Sublimation is the process of converting a substance from a solid to a what? The answer is gas. Okay, it's the process of converting a substance from a solid to a gas. The temperature, the temperature of a phase change is dependent on blank E. What is the temperature of a phase change dependent on? And you can know what this is if you look at any phase change diagram. That would be pressure. Phase change is always illustrated on a pressure temperature graph. So the temperature of a phase change is always going to be dependent on the respective pressure. Temperature does or does not increase during a phase change due to the enthalpy of a phase transition. So does temperature change or doesn't it change? Which one is the best fit? And the answer is does not. If you ever look at any phase change diagram, you always come to these plateaus. And the plateaus are like where the um, phase change occurs. You know, I think this is pressure. And this obviously is going to be temperature. So this is where phase change occurs, whether it be from solid to liquid or um, liquid to gas. And it's always a plateau because the temperature is not changing overall. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that could be said about that. All right, now for some heat transfer. Convection or radiation is not an effective form of heat transfer within a vacuum. Is it convection or radiation? And remember, the uh, radiation is best defined by telling you an example. So the most common form of radiation I can think of is the heat energy from the sun. You know, like it could be a cold day outside if you stand in um, within the rays of the sun. You're going to get hot. So that's radiation. 
Convection is the heat transfer in gas and liquid molecules. So if cold water comes in contact with hot water, it's going to like, you know, warm up the water. And then we have conduction. That's like a really common form. It's, uh, this is an oversimplification, but it's heat transfer like through solid objects. Like if I touch a hot pot or a curling iron or a flat iron, it goes from the solid metal slab to my hand. That's conduction. So which one can't occur in a vacuum? And that would be convection, heat transfer through fluids. And when I say fluids, I mean both solids and liquids. So convection cannot occur in a vacuum.